Hi, this is Micah Long, the Critical Consult MD. It's been a little while since I posted, but I wanted to show a quick video about some fun dyssynchrony that I've been struggling with repeatedly. I got it on video for one patient. I'll show you some examples and we'll talk about how we solve this problem a little bit. I'm gonna call this no fun with dyssynchrony. So here is our case. We're gonna walk through it. You can see that the camera is very shaky. Sorry about that. This is volume control mode of ventilation. And we're just gonna walk us through the first dyssynchrony we see. So if we take a look at volume control, something ain't right on that first waveform. Look at it one more time, zoomed in. There we are. So we're gonna make some changes. We'll try different mode first. My hospital tends to love PRVC, pressure regulated volume control. We're gonna hold it here for a minute and while we're watching, we know PRVC is smart pressure control. And so I want you to watch if it's really being smart and adjusting to the patient's tidal volume or if something isn't working right. You can compare as a tip your set tidal volume, your goal, compared to what the patient's getting. And we notice some changes there. And so I changed the mode again to a pressure control mode of ventilation. We're gonna adjust some settings based on some preferences and some goals I have for this. You can see we're shortening up the eye time a little bit, shortening the rise time a little bit. And here we are with pressure control for the last part of what we're gonna see here. And even this looks a little funny. There's two dyssynchronies on this same page. And there it's more continuous for the same one. All right, so what's going on here? If we play back the first part, here's our volume control window where I see it and I wanna change it. Let's pause there and look at that a little bit more closely. So here's what normal volume control should look like. You can tell that I'm not doing what I've called Darth Vader volume control. Darth Vader volume control or traditional typical volume control is a fixed flow rate. Here, instead of doing a fixed flow rate, what I've done is try to make the volume control look or feel physiologic. And what that means is I start the flow rate out really high and then I let it decelerate. This is called decelerating flow with volume control assist control. And with this, we know that the green, the flow waveform, is set by the ventilator and the yellow, the pressure waveform, is dependent on the patient, both their compliance and their activity. And in a decelerating mode, it gets really weird. It doesn't exactly follow a textbook, but sometimes you can get a nice peak in plateau. Here, we don't really know what's happening. That high peak flow gets some airway resistance in front of it uh, and things change a little bit. But we know that this is dependent on the patient. That's normal. This is what we were seeing. Take a look and notice that even though this doesn't look like the textbook, which means you should look for dyssynchrony anytime it doesn't look like the textbook, that the middle flow waveform that's set by the computer really doesn't change. In other words, the vent in this case is giving 460 mils in this pattern every time, no matter what the patient does. And you can see what the patient's doing. You can pretend you're the patient. You see we're landing at peep, the breath starts, and then what do they do? They're pulling pressure downward. That's sucking air. So 460 milliliters, probably not what the patient wants. We're doing a good light sedation strategy, tiny tidal volumes, because we want to be very lung protective. And sometimes patients really don't like that. And if they don't like that, what happens is they suck in air, but the vent doesn't care. In a volume mode, the vent only gives the set volume you set. If the patient wants more, they just don't get it. And the pressure waveform changes. And in this case, we see a suctioning in. That's called flow starvation. It happens in volume control. Here again is a picture of normal on the left of the screen, volume control decelerating flow. And we see on the right a flow starvation sucking in or a negative thumbprint on the inspiratory part of the pressure waveform. 
Let's go back to our first video. We can see it here. We've got this decelerating flow and flow starvation going on. So what are we gonna try to do? We're gonna try to flip modes. Our hospital, again, is really in love with PRVC, pressure regulated volume control. I give some talks on this, but we know that this is really just pressure control, assist control, but it's smart most of the time at least. What it does is it adjusts the pressure until you meet a goal tidal volume. So here we've picked 450, and if the patient, say, gets tired or sleepy or less compliant with progressive pulmonary edema, what the vent will do is turn up the pressure until you get to this tidal volume. But we see that that's not what's happening. Let's start it a little bit earlier. And if we start right at the start of when we did PRVC, we can see the vent starts out with a pressure here, right? And this is on a scale of 30. And the delta P is about 9. But what's the vent doing? It's actually tapering itself down. Why? Well, if we look at this waveform, it looks like the patient doesn't have a normal decelerating waveform. They're pulling in all this air. We'll show another picture of that in a second, but this is an inspiratory work of breathing pattern. And what's the vent doing? Well, in a pressure mode, if the patient wants more flow or a bigger tidal volume, what do they do? They help you, they help the vent and they get it. The vent gives a variable for the flow and it really only sets the pressure. So in this case, the patient is working with the ventilator and getting a tidal volume bigger than the one you picked, in this case in the mid 500s. And vents are not smart. So what the vent sees is that the tidal volume is simply bigger than what you set. It's more than 450 and the vent does the smart thing. If it's more than 450, we turn the pressure down. And that's all that's happening. This is called auto weaning of PRVC and it happens in a lot of our patients nowadays. You notice it's not alarming on the monitor, but it's happening because we do small tidal volumes and we do light sedation. Here's an example of it. I have hundreds of pictures of this. I've given other YouTube videos on it. Here's a PRVC auto wean. We see that heavy, not normal decelerating or scooped out flow on the waveform, on the uh, flow waveform, we see a sustained inspiratory dropping off a cliff. That's an inspiratory work of breathing pattern. We see that we've set a goal tidal volume of 450 and the patient is getting a little bit above that and the vent has weaned itself to near peep. And right at the end of the breath, the patient finally stops breathing, starts their exhalation and you get this little bump up. But for the most part, you see, we run the peep, 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 patient triggers, it's a little negative inflection, and then the vent maybe gives one or two actual pressure supportive uh, effort, right? It gives pressure along with the effort, almost nothing. And then that little peak at the end is the patient stopping. Let's look at it closely one more time. This is very common. And it can make patients work really hard. Can increase your myocardial oxygen demand, uh, make you look terrible, very uncomfortable, mess with your sedation regimens, the whole nine yards. So be very mindful of this. It doesn't alert, doesn't alarm. You have to look at those waveforms. All right, back to our original video. We start out with flow starvation. We're going to flip over to PRVC. And we're going to watch this in real time. Starts out with the pressure there. You can see the patient's doing the same thing. They have that tail end of the breath where they start to breathe out before the ventilator is ready for it. That's called delayed cycling. The breath is too long, that little uptick there. And the vent here, it's even needing to zoom in on the pressure because it's giving less and less support. It's turning itself down. It's doing the auto wean as we watch it. So let's switch modes. Let's try pressure control and see what happens. This is a really common pattern where you track the dyssynchrony along your different modes. So I'm going to shorten the inspiratory time because we saw that delayed cycling uptick. We're going to shorten the rise time so they get that initial air right away, right when they want it. And here's our pattern. We see it's pressure control at a set pressure. So this is fixed. And we can see what the patient does is this sustained effort. 
So instead of looking like a decelerating pattern, they hold that effort up. They get a big tidal volume. Here it is again. And they do a couple double triggers in the middle here. I think one is right here. One, two. And they got a big second breath. And they're making a lot of work to do this, right? This is a lot of effort. And the tidal volumes are much bigger than probably what you would typically set. Now that gets challenging to figure out because is this safe or not? Well, that's a very nuanced question I'm not gonna tackle today. But my generic statement is the amount of pressure across the alveolus is far more important than the volume you select. When we think of a very sedate patient who's not making respiratory effort, we think only of the driving pressure on the ventilator, how much the P high is from the P low, and that can be in pressure control and volume control and anything. But when the patient's making all this effort, you really don't know what your alveolar pressure gradient is. Dr. Slutsky wrote a really fantastic review on this called Ventilator-Induced Lung Injury. It's published in New England Journal just a few years ago, and it looked at the trans-alveolar pressure gradient with some excellent figures to teach this point. But if you're pulling and working hard to breathe, you have a negative pleural pressure, right? Our diaphragm is working, negative pleural pressure. So our driving pressure is not 10. It's 10 minus the negative pleural pressure, which might be 10, might be 15. Um, so it might really be unsafe. Let's look at these side by side. Here's pressure control in a normal pattern. And I recorded it. Here we go. So we have a normal decelerating. Sometimes it looks scooped out here. Patient's triggering and we get this nice decelerating pattern of breath. This is a little bit abnormal, but not that abnormal. The pressure waveform should look like a square. It kind of doesn't. Some of that's the patient ending their breath early. And here is an inspiratory worker breathing pattern. Pressure looks fixed, but instead of having a deceleration, they run off the cliff, right? It's a sustained inspiratory effort. <sighs> that's inspiratory work of breathing. Here's another example, a couple of them. So pressure is fixed. You can see the patient sucking in negative pressure here, giving up at the end of the breath. Lots of effort. And instead of having a normal deceleration, we see this uptick, this sustained inspiratory effort here. Same thing on the right, inspiratory worker breathing. Be very mindful, all of that talk and thought you gave to safe driving pressure is out the window when you have intensely negative pleural pressure. And I'll tell you, these patients aren't always obvious when you look at them externally. If you've got a real strong diaphragm or you're a very strong, vigorous person, you might miss the massive effort they're putting in. And similarly, if you have a patient with a, a high BMI or that holds their weight over their chest, you may not notice the work of breathing like you should. So, Going through this one last time, we have flow starvation on volume control, light sedation, tiny tidal volumes, maybe a little acidotic from critical illness or from your ventilation. We switch modes and go to PRVC. The vent picks an arbitrary starting pressure. We notice that uptick in pressure at the end because the patient's stopping their breath early. And we also notice that sustained inspiratory effort. We don't see a decelerating pattern and the vent is weaning itself. It now has to zoom in, it's weaning itself so low, you're offering almost no support. So here we have an eye time that's too long, that's called delayed cycling. We have inspiratory work of breathing, uh, and patient's probably not very comfortable, which is probably why we're sitting bedside trying to fix this. We're gonna shorten the inspiratory time. We're gonna bring the rise time where the breath turns on a little bit faster. That often helps and we're gonna try pressure control. And here in pressure control, what we see is big tidal volumes and an inspiratory worker breathing pattern. What you didn't see on the patient level is that this was more comfortable, but you have to make a very, very challenging clinical decision here. Do I tolerate the work, the negative pleural pressure, and the big tidal volumes, or do I deepen sedation 
um, uh, paralyze or do some other approach to fixing this problem. And I'll leave you with that. I hope you have an excellent day. Take good care of your patients.